Hello and welcome to Eye on South Asia. I'm Bhavna Vannan. And I'm Sunil Hali. Every week, we'll discuss the latest events, news, and happenings with South Asians living in North America. Sunil, let's get started with our first story. This is causing quite a, a bit of attention here regarding um, Indian Americans, Indian professionals coming from India and their visas getting denied. Yep. That's the big word that they're hearing. This is the biggest story in the Capitol Hill, Washington, D.C., and the corridor of India and America, especially. Mm -hmm. And um, it's causing a lot of problems because the numbers are so high. Even the um, lawmakers are making a lot of noise about it and uh, kind of protesting or, uh, um, you know, observing this kind of uh, decrease in the H-1B and L-1 mm -hmm. is very significantly going to affect at least the Indo-American relationship or even by some context, the business in America. Right. And um, the some of the lawmakers have come forward and they have said that, that uh, there are instances when the visas have been denied on absolutely flimsy reasons. Uh, there is a classic case here. Uh, one company applied for an H-1B and mm -hmm. uh, they were denied because the educator thought that their gross annual income was $15,000. So obviously they can't afford an H-1 candidate. Yes. But they did not notice in the application it was in thousands. Yeah. So it's not so that really means 15, 15 000, million. It's 15 million. Exactly. And so, there are so many typos and things that they are rejecting based on, as you said, and it really seems like the U.S. consulate in India is what the target is of these denials. And they're just finding the smallest typos on people's application and rejecting based on that. You know, it's kind of turned into a game. Like you mentioned this thing called RFE. You know, the process mm -hmm. is you apply for an H-1B or even an L-1, which is intra-company transfer to U.S. Uh, then the, there is a uh, review which is done by an officer mm -hmm. uh, from the USCIS and if they find something which hopefully is not what you just said, a comma and a full <laughs> stop missing here and there yeah. and they have more queries which is called RFA request for uh, more information, more information, more right. Yeah. And that itself has gone up, you know, request for evidence was when there was a really serious situation where you found something that was missing and you wanted to get additional information. Mm -hmm. But here they say they, uh, the um, RFEs have gone up to from uh, almost 300 to 500 percent during the Obama administration. Yeah. Some of the facts that have come up are so high, they are saying that uh, the denial rate was uh, in 2004 at about 11 percent and in 2011 it is 17 percent. Mm -hmm. You've kind of grown up by 6 percent which is significant. Then they're talking about the evidence uh, rates which is RFE used to be as little as 4 percent in 2004 and it is now almost 26 percent. Wow. This is now seen as a way to slow down the process or mm -hmm. deny but uh, the USCIS director, Alejandro Mayorkas, thinks it is not the case. They have proper guidelines for their adjudicators mm -hmm. who know what to do and they take case by case and hopefully they do the right things. Right. And, and you know what happens in a lot of cases is that we have Indian employees of American companies and they come here on a either H-1B or permanent residency status, something like that. And then they might even go and visit India for a couple of weeks mm -hmm. and upon reapplying to return to the U.S., they're denied re-entry. Yeah, that is uh, itself a very serious case and then there is another situation when you have to go for a renewal of your H-1B and mm -hmm. you go back to India because you may have a counselor processing for that mm -hmm. and you are denied or you are sometimes stuck. I know many people, they were stuck there for months. Right. And they, their bills here are piling up. They have mortgages or apartment rents and stuff like that. I so mean, uh, this is a very serious difficult situation. situation. And, uh, you know, one of the lawmakers was mentioning that this also affects the hiring process in U.S. itself because let's say you are getting a capable H-1 guy who is going to be at a senior position to run a project. Yes. And then that project will obviously engage more 
um, staffing which is junior mm -hmm. but when the person is not in place how do you expect to bring the people below him so there is a constant uh, delay in employing even the people living in US so this right. This process has a serious effect, and I think with the amount of um, representation that at least India has made, mm -hmm. um, there should be some correction about it. Especially since Obama has been making speeches and claims that he's going to make it easier for uh, Indian uh, Indians and highly skilled foreign uh, workers coming right. to the U.S. to get citizenship and permanent residency and but all not this time it's from like we've been we've been talking about the state of the union address he was very clear that he is um, not in favor of outsourcing the jobs and he's talking about higher level of taxes to people who are under that category and the companies who are mm -hmm. taking that kind of help from outside so i think it's all to do with elections and uh, hopefully when the election is over and he comes back. The numbers might change, do you think? And if he's supposed to come back, <laughs> the numbers will change. Hopefully, the 26% goes down back to 4% or yeah, 6%. Yeah, hopefully. Going on to the next story, um, Bhavna, um, the biggest global issue today, as we reported last week itself, is about Iran. And this, this is a very unique quadrilateral axis that uh, has been created between US, India, Iran, and Israel. Somehow India is being dragged into this um, war against Iran, basically to stop the proliferation of the uh, nuclear um, capabilities of the country and the sanctions have been imposed on Iran. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, US obviously has quite a few allies who have gone ahead with the sanctions. In fact, the sanctions have been increased in the last one week. Mm -hmm. But India has had a very, very solid, long-term relationship with Iran, which is cultural, which is trade, which is almost neighborhood. Yeah. Um, so India is not necessarily going to follow a line because U.S. wants it to follow. Mm -hmm. Now, having said that, um, there are obviously detractors of the Indo-U.S. relationship in America also, in Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. And those people are having a field at this time. They think this is the time to make noise and say, you see, we told you India will never listen to you. Mm -hmm. and, and this they, relationship won't yield any fruits. And that's what they're calling the anti-India campaign. Anti-India campaign. And it's really taking shape. And especially the uh, Jewish lobby is mm -hmm. very aggressive in this case. And uh, some of the congressmen have actually gone and presented uh, to Indian ambassador to US, Ms. Nirupma uh, Rao. Uh, Congressman Steve Israel and Congressman Hanna, Richard Hanna, have sent a joint letter. Mm -hmm. And the whole idea is that India should, being a very powerful country, a significant power, in especially the Asian side of it, should be supporting this kind of sanctions. And being a very close friend of Iran will put a lot of pressure in Iran. But India at the same time made announcements about a bilateral trade delegation going from India to Iran. That has compounded this uh, problem further. Now, yes. when you look at the facts, um, and some of them do agree that India has constantly uh, been decreasing its oil needs from Iran, but India has traditionally depended on Iran. It had a higher level of import from Iran for the oil. Mm -hmm. And if you shut it down, then if you India shut will, it down completely, it will be an energy crisis. For India? Yeah. So India is saying, look, uh, we have, which is the Prime Minister's statement, we announced it last week also, that they'll bring it down below 10%, which is the case. And if you look at some of the facts in 2008 and 9, mm -hmm. 21.8 million, 2009 and 10, 21 million, and 2010 and 11, it's 18.5 million tons of oil imported from Iran. Mm -hmm. So it has And dropped. you look at the percentages, how they've come down from 2008, 16.5, 2009, 13%, and 2011, 10, 11%. And this year, they're supposed to be hitting less than 10%. Mm -hmm. So India is saying, look, guys, we can't just do it just like that because you want us to do it even if we want to do it. Right. And on top of that, now what has happened is uh, because the mm, the financial institutions have been blocked because of this uh, the the sanctions that have been passed, mm -hmm. so India cannot get paid by Iran. Mm -hmm. so dollar payment is not permissible, and right. they have to find a way to go about it. So yes. what is happening is the 
almost there have been i believe 3 billion dollar worth of trade between india and iran mm -hmm. and that money seems to be stuck so the indian delegation is going to iran and finding out what are the alternate ways to get compensated which is what are the other products maybe they will be imported back into uh, iran from especially the food supplies right they've been trying to come up with creative ways on how to make this payment and make this trade work and just go around these us sanctions right including gold which we were discussing at one point but they're talking about now uh, the essentials for life which is food yes. medicine and uh, the um, uh, us administration has said they have not put any sanctions against these products so india probably will end up exporting uh, this kind of products to iran mm -hmm. so this the only thing i think what has come is the, its timing is very very bad and um, e even if you see what the statement uh, was made by uh, one of the congressmen that we know india shares our goal of ensuring that iran does not get a nuclear capability and appreciate india's votes against iran iaea mm -hmm. but it's just that the timing of this whole um, trade uh, is just not very positive uh to the us administration right. and obviously the um the uh, people who or the group special like as said some of the jewish groups who don't have the interest to mm -hmm. see this relationship foster or make sure that iran is kind of strangled uh, because iran has come out very strongly against uh, israel yeah. so it seems to be an iran and israel war being played in proxy by us and india for that matter yes and But, just kind of dragging in so many countries because the us essentially wants to isolate iran right and yeah. stop trade from happening between other european countries or any countries in iran and they they want india to follow suit but we'll see what happens like i said you yeah. know the there is a 3 billion dollar uh, in iranian imports areas that is accumulated uh, since 2010 and uh, mr m rafiq ahmed who is uh, heading the uh, india's chamber um, uh, for the delegation uh, for the india export organization which is called federation of india export organization mm -hmm. has said look we need to find a way to get paid yes. and uh, iron pay so this is the only way they are figuring out that uh, the trade imbalances can be taken care of mm -hmm. moving on to another sudden uh, foreign relationship crisis that india has run into which mm -hmm. is with italy an italian ship which was in the neighborhood of india in the indian ocean mm -hmm. was approached by a fisherman's boat and that boat was coming too close to them and they felt who knows this may be uh, the typical pirates which have been very notoriously active in indian ocean mm -hmm. and they kind of fired at them and uh, some of the people on the boat were hurt and at least there were two fishermen who were killed right now this is very unfortunate now india wants um the the vessel and its um the people who are uh, running it uh, primarily the security people to be brought to india and to kerala and to be booked and tried Mm-hmm. And, and they is... want also want an apology from the Italian government. Mm-hmm. In fact, the Italian uh, ambassador to India was uh, called in to see one of the foreign um, uh, secretaries, I guess, in Delhi. Mm -hmm. And um, it seems to be suddenly gotten into a deadlock. Iran, uh, Italy has yet not uh, conceded to that demand. Mm -hmm. They say, look, we found what we found, and we felt there was. Uh, this uh, fishing boat was which was approaching our nepali registered mm -hmm. vessel and rikalexia and it was an aggressive posturing by the boat so our guys had no option but to go and shoot right the the mercantile ship said that they used standard procedures but then again perhaps the indian fishermen didn't know what the standard procedure was and as you said a case of murder has been you know registered, uh, registered against this crew True. and um it's it's very sad it's very devastating True. so hopefully justice prevails in this situation and we're going to take a short break with that so we'll be right back on Ion South Asia <laughs> 